Let's combine a few of our skills together and draw this cube and two cylinders. Whenever you have stacked objects, uh, it helps to start off with the object on the bottom. Let's start off with drawing the cube. All of you should know the process by now and be fairly practiced at it. Let's sketch in our vertical line that represents the front corner of the cube. The next step is to measure out our front two angles. Our bottom two angles, which are, if you remember, are going to be slightly steeper than the top angles. Next step is to measure out the width. So let's measure the width, compare that to the height. It looks like it's about three fourths of the way up. Let's find three fourths here and sketch it in. Let's do the same thing for the other side. It looks like this side is a little tiny bit shorter. Sure enough, a little bit past the halfway point here. A little bit shorter. Now let's get the back two angles. Back angles, if you remember, need to be a little bit flatter than the front angles. So if we look, look at this angle and bring it down, you can see that it's a little bit flatter than the front angle. Okay, here's one back angle. Let's get the other back angle. In this case, make extra sure your cube is correct because we're going to be using it to get the next object. So you can imagine if the foundation of your building is incorrect, the second floor is going to collapse. Right? Nothing you stack on it is going to be right. So in this case, this cube is a foundation for our next object. Do not finish this cube. Do not finish anything until all of your objects are sketched in. All right, let's deal with our cylinder that's right here. Let's do a little bit of information gathering. We're going to use our vertical alignment tool to figure out where our cylinder starts on this side and where our cylinder starts on this side. Hold your pencil vertically. Notice that it's going to start at about the middle of this line. So here is this line. Here's the middle of this line. Right about here. Here is the starting point of the cylinder on the right side. And now let's do the same thing on the left side. Where is it? Right about there, not quite through the middle of this line, a little bit further away. So the cylinder is not quite centered along this corner. It's slightly off its center here and here. Okay. By the way, we can cross check to make sure that we've made the cylinder wide enough by taking a measurement of the cylinder side to side and comparing it to the height. So notice that the height, the width of the cylinder is about half the height of the cube. Let's see if we got that right. Huh, I managed to get it right. Okay, now let's figure out where the cylinder starts here. Where is the bottom of our cylinder? We're gonna use our horizontal alignment tool to figure out that the bottom of the cylinder is ever so slightly below this corner right here. So let's find that spot. Let's draw a horizontal line to that spot. Now we know that our cylinder is going to start here, here, and where is its top? How do we figure that out? The good thing about drawing multiple objects is that we can now use a number of different ways to get our measurements. So for instance, I can take a measurement from here to here and now compare it to the height of the cube. It looks like it's about one third of the way up. One, two, three. We can do that. Here's about a third. Here is the top of the cylinder. Or we can also just measure the cylinder top to bottom and see how many times it fits across. Once, a little bit less than twice. So now we can use both measurements or just one measurement, one of them, to make sure that our cylinder is the right proportion. All right, you know the drill when it comes to cylinders. The next step is to establish the dimensions of this part right here. 
the ellipse. How do we do that? We measure from top to bottom, and we see how many times it fits across. One, two, three, four, about a quarter, right? So let's find a quarter of this. That's gonna be something like that, right? Let's take this distance, drop it down. That's gonna be like this, right? Then we know how to draw an ellipse, right? We find the center of the object vertically, horizontally, and now we can lightly sketch in our cylindrical shape like this. And then for the bottom, we can try to find these distances, but all we really have to do is draw a curve that's a little bit rounder than this. Just make sure it's a little bit curvier, a little bit rounder. A little bit of a shortcut, but that works. Boom. Just so you guys can see what I'm drawing. Okay, we've got our object sketched in just so it doesn't get distorted, you can see it. All right, we've got one additional cylinder to sketch in. Let's gather some information. First piece of information. Well, what do you think? I think probably the best thing to do is figure out where it starts over here. So in this case, we're going to take a measurement between the objects. We're gonna measure the distance between the left side of the, of the cube and the right side of the cylinder. Let's measure it and compare it to something. What do we compare it to? We can compare it to the height of the cube. We can compare it to the other cylinder. So for instance, when I measure this, it looks like it is about three-fourths, or, well, I would say maybe about two-thirds the distance here, right? So now we can take that distance, carry it over, and now we know exactly where our cylinder starts on the right side. Now we're going to use a horizontal alignment tool to figure out that the bottom of this cylinder lines up slightly above the corner of the cube. All right, so that's going to be right about here. Let's draw a horizontal line. Now we can figure out how wide the cylinder is. I think these cylinders are about the same width. Right there. Yeah, they are, okay. Okay, they're the same width. They're not gonna be the same height because notice how this cylinder has a little tiny sliver of an ellipse. This one's more open, right? Because we're looking down at this one a little more, it's gonna appear a little bit taller from here to here. So now let's measure the height of this ellipse and see how it fits across. It looks like it's about two thirds, right? So let's take this, bring it up, and we're gonna draw a slightly wider rectangle. Then we're gonna check the dimensions here. Let's check the dimensions. This is gonna be one, two, three. So notice, remember that this one was from here to here, four across. This one from here to here is three across, right? There's a wider shape here. All right, so now let's find a third. Here's a third. Let's find the center. Find the center and sketch in our next elliptical shape. For the bottom one, just make the curve a little bit rounder. All right, now that all of your object are sketched in, now you can go in and finish the line. Before you do that, uh, I recommend you clean up the drawing a little bit. Um, I don't have my eraser on hand. Ah, oh, here it is. You're gonna use your kneaded eraser. Instead of erasing out the construction lines, just light them a little bit. The good thing about the kneaded eraser is that I can, first of all, erase if I want to but I can also lighten things if the sketch is a little bit too dark, right? So just kind of clean up your sketch a little bit before you start committing to lines. The thing is, look, I can finish the drawing and then go, st go in and erase, uh, but I find that it's a little bit easier to clean up the drawing a little at a time, just so 
you don't have to be so careful with your erasing later once the drawing is finished. Okay, now let's clean up the drawing, put in a sharp line. Again, when it comes to ellipses, make sure that you're creating a soft transition from the ellipse to the walls of your cylinder. Okay, make sure the curves are symmetrical, one side, other side. Let's clean up our cube. Again, hard to draw and hold the phone at the same time. giving anybody vertigo with my shaky camera. Okay, so slightly rough, but uh, that's the idea. So here's a drawing that we drew with a combination of all of our measuring tools our newly acquired cube drawing skills and our newly acquired cylinder drawing skills.